Good morning, good morning. Getting the morning chores done and getting another task done that I am way behind on, and that is pruning fruit trees. The girls are already out here in the barn helping me out. Thank you, girls. Thank you. <laughs> They're grabbing eggs. Well, trying to anyway. Grabbing eggs, giving the chickens some scratch in the morning, feeding the cats, doing all those things. Get them started young. They will love to help you out. It's not fu Sunday fun day yet. Oh. It's not Sunday fun day yet, is it? <laughs> all right. So it's okay. Your sister will help you. Hi, cats. Hi, cats. Come on. Okay. Okay, you can't reach the opener. You're too short. And don't bunk her in the head with that door. Oh! <laughs> All right. Well, we'll close it up. We'll let her do her business. She scared me. <laughs> she scared you. <laughs> we'll let her do her business and we'll get the <laughs> eggs later. <laughs> So we are going to be pruning our fruit trees today and it's almost too late. I like to prune them in winter when things are dormant and they're coming out of dormancy right now because spring is sprung very fast here in Texas after that nasty freeze. It's going to be like 78 degrees today, which is spring weather here in Texas. And I can see some buds on those trees already. Now we did a pruning video, a very informative pruning video in the past and we do pruning uh, over time, we've also done a video where we pruned canker off an apple tree. And uh, we're going to be doing all that today, but I'm not going to be like going in depth on how to do it because we've already done those videos. So now let's head over to the orchard. Well, I can't even call it the orchard anymore. I kind of have two orchards because one's over here, one's over in the other property, as I call it, across the dry creek. And uh, yeah, so I kind of am getting fruit trees just absolutely everywhere. Let's go. Really watery. Uh, kitty. <laughs> well, before we head out there, I'm going to need some things here. Got some tree sealer, some pruning sealer, because there's a lot of diseases in this area. I've got my silky hand saw. We need a pair of regular pruning shears. We need our loppers, that'll go in the bucket. We also need to clean all of our equipment. Always take your alcohol with you to clean it off. And we also need, I think I saw some more canker. So I need my, this is a special knife. I don't know if you guys saw this, probably saw it in the other video. It's got this little hook on it. It's a little bit easier to kind of carve out into the tree. So I've got that. And I've also got some craft paper, which if you've got disease like canker, you don't want it sitting at the base of your tree because it'll reinfect the tree. And uh, so you put that craft paper around the bottom and it will help you to catch all the diseased pieces you cut off with that knife. All right. And then I'm going to seal it that with that pruner, uh, pruning sealer as well. All right, let's head to the orchard. So on your homestead, this is a disadvantage of having too much property or planting things too far away from your house. So this is across our dry creek. Yeah, we only have seven and a half acres. I know, I know, but this is the issue. So we're over here. I haven't seen these trees. I haven't been over here in two weeks. And look, everything is budding out. Look at this plum tree behind me. Look at that. There's flowers, flowers everywhere. Everything's budding out, going like gangbusters, and <laughs> that's that's pretty serious issue because I need to get these pruned. Like I said, okay, so it's best to prune in winter. Spring is okay. Summer is fine if you want to slow the growth. Spring slows the growth a little bit. Winter is the best because you'll promote growth if it's still in uh, dormancy. Do not ever prune in the fall. So. That's your guidelines. All right, kids are up in this weird, I call it a crab apple tree. It looks like a cherry tree. It looks like it produces little things, <laughs> little things that are, uh... oh, thank you so much. Thank you for the flower. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, 
has little things like cherries. I have no idea. They do not taste like cherries. They taste like crab apples. They look like cherries. The leaves look like cherries. The tree looks like a cherry, but they don't taste like cherries. It's the strangest thing and I cannot figure out what this tree is at all. It's very odd. So I'm extremely disappointed. This apple just never got legs. It got blight, which is common, and it got canker and I cut it out and it doesn't look like the canker killed it, but I don't know what killed it because it's done. It's dead. I need to get it out of here. Uh, and the other one is seriously, seriously damaged. I don't know how much I'm going to have to prune this thing back. But here's your object lesson, guys. God gives us nature. God created nature to learn lessons. He put us in a garden originally, right? And the nature shows us lessons as in you need to prune things out of your life that you don't need. Okay? So, and it's painful. So pruning sin out of your life is painful because we're worldly and pruning my gorgeous apple tree because it got a disease pruning it back so much has been just gut-wrenching because it was so beautiful before and it still might not make it but i gotta try my best to do that and to get that sin out and to get the disease out so there's our object lesson anyway we are going to prune these and do the best we can because they're already flowering out craziness so remember when you're pruning the three d's dead diseased or damaged wood the three d's and cac clustering acute and crossing so remember that three d's and cac and you'll be good to go and then shape your tree how you want to shape it certain trees like a uh, modified leader central leader uh, up the center and a lot like to be pruned like a vase where it's got an open center and there's stuff around the edge So make your determination on what you want and then take care of business. We have to take care of business right now <laughs> Oh, That's got a lot of ants in it. My little Ooh, buddy more like a branch gut. All right, yeah. let's let's trim out. Look at this. This one here is crossing over, so we want to get that one out of there. And hairs love to grow straight up and up and down. They cross over each other. So let's take this portion of that one out, so that we can get this one kind of growing out this way, not up into its neighbors up here. And same thing with this. All these little, I guess you could go, call them uh, sprouts. Water sprouts. Yeah, they're just growing yeah, straight up and down. Do you cut a hole? Here's a good example. This is an apricot tree, and I'm going to prune it and just show you the basics really, really quick and some issues that you want to look out for and take care of so let me take you off the tripod and we'll get you in here and we'll show you okay so this one right here you can see this one is starting to cross over this branch right here and i don't want that to happen so we are going to take that one out of there now why do we want to do that well that's because when it gets windy and the branches start rubbing on one another, then they are going to uh, cause damage to each other. And that's a spot where disease can get in. So you see this little guy here, he's starting to cross over on there. We're going to take that one out. Oops. There we go. He's going out. So you can see this one is growing kind of straight up and down right here. We do want something to come out this way, but this isn't the one. We're going to have a different one. So he comes out. Now up in the center of the tree, we want a lot of open space. So you can see this one right here is grown up into the center space. We want to take that one out. This one right here is kind of growing back into that center space. So we're going to take that one out. We got a couple that are already in the space. So we want to keep this big one here. He's kind of coming out that way. Um, but 
these guys all will come out. And you can see on the edge here, we got this big one that's kind of even grown up underneath there. And I want to keep that one, but I want it to kind of come out this way so we have some growth on this side of the tree. So I'm actually going to clip him back probably right around this area so we get that crossing taken care of but then there's there's something to kind of start to to come out this way from the tree and fill out the tree this way all right we got this big old guy coming back into the center of the tree this one unfortunately is going back into the center we'll take that one off take it down as close as you can to your main uh, branch or trunk now these are okay out here but i'll probably take this one off because it was about to cross over with this guy right here we're going to take off this one and that one because it's going to cross over but we like this branch this is coming out in a nice area here to fill in this space so we'll keep that we got some clustering going on at the end of this branch so and this one right here so we want to take out the clusters we're going to take out kind of the middle piece and let the others fill everything out Ooh, that one's pretty thin and small. Ah, there we got it. There's another cluster over here, but this one's growing straight up. This one's going to grow into the other branch. There, we're going to leave this guy to come down here and fill out this space right here. We hope those points were helpful. Like I said, I've got another video that goes over it in depth, but I kind of went over those points again. I'm not going to actually do the canker today on the apple tree. Uh, it's time to get some other things done. Just ran out of, out of time. You can go refer to this video up here, which is the one where we talked about how to get canker off the tree with that knife that I showed you earlier. Now, it's been a challenge. Is this a teaching video? Is it a vlog? I've kind of merged the two together. Um, that's just the way I am. That's what my channel is about. So if you like it, cool. Hit that like button and share it with others because we appreciate it and we're growing and we want to be able to give you useful information in each video we make, even if it's us just walking around daily on the homestead. Have a great day. We love you. See you next time. Bye.